Yeah, we'll break it down. You see the ball pressure, the point guard? Mm -hmm. You see this, like, it's, he's not, I mean, he gambled a little bit right there, but you can see, like, this is what I want you to do over the course of the game, and this is why you need to condition, because things like this, little plays like that, little expenditures of energy over the course of the game, they add up to big things, right? Now, that might not be a home run play. It might You might not even think it's worth your time. But I'm telling you, it's like body shots. It's like boxing. Over the course of the game, you just wear people down. And now you've trained at such a high level that you're still able to do intense things in the fourth quarter. And like simple things, though. Do simple things at a high level when people are fatigued. You still got legs to hit shots, all that kind of stuff, right? Your yeah. mental is there. So what are you seeing right here? What kind of, what kind of action is this? Oh. Uh... The big man's hedging past the no. screen. So what is this? This is screen? Screen. Yeah. What is that called? A side ball screen. There's two of them. Oh, there's two of them. Isn't that like Horan's? Same type no. of thing? No, no. It's a double drag, essentially. Oh, a double so drag. Okay. big man rolls all the way to the rim. How are they guarding? So right now, okay, guy goes under the initial. What do you think it is a point guard? Right here. Guard to guard, right? Essentially, mm -hmm. this is point guard. This is like a three man three man or maybe this is a four this looks like a four man now because the action was already decided right and there's another big here he can't pull it out if this was a single ball screen so he comes off right here and they switch that what happens mm -hmm. if, if there's no secondary ball screen they were kind of locked in here because of the action but if there's a sec if there's no second ball screen it's not a double drag like that or you, double you high ball the, screen you have the big on you could just take the big no so what would you do though what would be your next your next uh Thought there how would you organize the floor well what would, be, what would be the timing so you would drag you would pull the ball back you would send yeah. people away to create space and then what would you do once the space materialized now you would what what are you looking at you know that you have the big on an island and what are you looking at behind you to see if i got my shooters on the wings so if they help i gotta kick out because it's gonna be a blow by yeah, so first of all, what you would need to have happen, say that that was a single ball screen, right? And then mm -hmm. you had the big up top. Well, what would you, you would do is you'd need a shooter close and you'd need a shooter close or a lot of space. Because if there's not a shooter close to you, what's going to happen? Where's that man going to sit? The man's going oh, to sit in the gap. Paint. He's, he's going to sit in the gap, right? So say that this was a non-shooter here. You had a mismatch up top. Non-shooter, shooter in the corner. So this guy's probably going to be top locking or, or tight, right? If this guy's a non-shooter, well, he's sitting in the middle of the paint because he knows that he has to help the man with the ball, right? Yeah. So what would you do here to organize the floor before you even look to attack? Tell him to down you, screen. You would go down screen because now you're lifting your shooter. The yeah. man that's sitting here at the nail, he can't possibly guard the hedge. So all this guy has to do is get body contact or this guy now goes tight. This big realizes, oh, shoot, I got to go out quickly. I'm late, which now creates what for you? Space. A space, a penetrating angle. Mm -hmm. You see what he's doing here? See? So yeah. what should Pangos have done? Should this have guy passed. should either this guy should either cut, right? Because that will pull this defender, or he should go pin down. Now this angle would be really tough for a pin down, so he should probably cut. Yeah, yeah, a lot of space. So that shot right there. Look at the shot clock. Six, five, four. Is that a good shot? Fuck no. Terrible. That's a that's a bad shot. Yeah. He would have got blocked too by the big man in the paint. But there's still four seconds on the clock. Yeah. What right now is Zenit in? What are they? Oh, they're in? Where are uh, they in? I'm not sure. What is that? Does this look like man to man? Oh, no, they're in zone. Wow, I was looking at the other team. Yeah, they're in how zone. Do you, how do you attack a zone in theory? You got to be the, five, four out, one in, right? The ball has to move. That's you have to move. move the ball side to side. Think about this. Hey, what's the difference between man and zone in high-level theory? You're not guarding one person. You're guarding the whole team. You're guarding a zone, Yeah. right? You're guarding a zone. Now you're guarding the closest man to that zone. But as people move and the ball moves – the more like every per zone, even myself included, I've, I've, I mean, I play basketball now 20 years as the ball moves and the balls in certain spots, zones have rules, right? No matter if you're one, three, one, 
two, three, three, two, one, whatever. Zones have rules typically because there's a lot of ambiguity. You're not simply just following a man. So now the more that the ball moves, well, and people move to different areas, well, the rules, what are they thinking about? They're not only thinking about where is the man, but they're also thinking, oh, what's the rule in this situation? Well, the more that your mind is thinking, usually the slower your feet are, right? Yeah. So what does that lead to? Mistakes. Angles, gaps, mistakes, for sure. So you want to move the ball quickly. You have space. You need to have shooters, for sure. And you usually want to get the ball to the high post in some yeah, capacity because that will pull the bottom man up. And now you have penetration. Exactly. But right now, much the same as in man to man, the more that you hold the ball, the more you're doing the job for the defense, because look what the shot clock is doing right now. So right now there's 14 seconds on the shot clock, right? Yeah. 10, 10 seconds have been eaten. Almost half of the shot clock has been eaten. Have they been able to expend any energy? Have they had to expend any Ooh. energy? Zero, right? You see why when we talk about getting down the floor early, why it's so important to be in shape and your first three steps are so critically important. Because now if you get up the floor fast and you dribble with pace, even if you don't think you're going to be able to attack, but you get into the attacking zone, well, you know, your legs, you go do defensive slides. You'll be shifting, talking, rotating, closing out. Well, you do that for eight seconds, eight seconds. You can still do that. And then you can contest and you can box out. You have energy. Do that for another four to five seconds, even three seconds, every single possession. Usually at the end of the play, somebody breaks down or someone's out of position, which leads to easy shots, paint touch threes, drives, dump offs, right? It's all, it's a war of attrition, but it's all about doing the little things, especially as a point guard, you're trying to organize the floor early and get your guys to buy in because you're not trying to win the battle. The battle is the possession. You're trying to win the war. The and all, it, most times it comes down to conditioning and being able to control the controllables, getting to your spots, cutting with pace, setting screens, doing all the little things, right? Mm -hmm. Ball goes high post. What's the first, so guide the high post. Who do you have to have at the high post? You're big. You're the big, tallest guy, so you can get but the ball over. But what does he have to be able to do? Shoot the free throw. The, he, that, has, that, yeah. he has to be able to shoot and put it on the deck for one to two dribbles and have a strong body, right? Yeah. Because, so say that you have a guy at the high post in your zone and you recognize, yo, this guy, like his handle's real weak and he's physically frail. Well, the guy that's guarding him, it doesn't really matter how fast he is often because the big will just gap you and he's got length to be able to contest the shot. And even if you do shoot it like a pull-up two, well, now it's a contested long two. You live with the odds, right? So the mm -hmm. guy has to be a decent shooter to be able to pull the defense out, respect it. He has to be able to hard rip one dribble either way. And he has to be a good passer because he essentially becomes the second point guard on the floor. So if you come down the floor, you're running a zone, you get into your stuff. Say you sprint up the floor, you send your wings. And now all of a sudden you realize, okay, the guy that's at the high post is the wrong guy. What would you do? Call a switch. switch. Switch him out. Switch him out. Yeah. What's the read right now? What kind of coverage is this? Uh, on defense? Yep. Is this going to be a hedge? or? Oh, no. Yeah, I think so. It will be a hedge. If no. he gets caught in the screen. Is this a hedge? Oh, no. No, drop, 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 drop coverage. So if he goes under the screen on drop coverage, what are you doing? Shooting. Shooting. That's a buck. So what he does here is called a rescreen. He comes off. He still recognizes, okay, there's 10 seconds on the shot clock, right? Now look at the floor. Look at the spacing on the floor. So first of all, this is a poor screen. This is why you have to reward your bigs. Right? And you got to get them involved early because the more that you reward your bigs as a point guard, the more inclined they are to set good screens for you. And if this is a great screen right here, if he actually gets body contact on the guy, he's walking into a shot right now, right? Mm -hmm. Right there. Look at the spacing on the floor as well. So this guy right here, what's he doing? What is he allowing the defender to do? Envision, mm -hmm. envision right now, this guy is deep corner, and this guy is sitting right here as opposed to right here. What does Kalaitz just see? Space. Space. So he might be, because if a defender goes under the ball screen and you have pace and he gets a clip, now what is he doing? He's penetrating downhill with a mm -hmm. shooter in the strong side corner, and there's only one defender to beat. You see how this guy's inside ceiling here? Yeah. So now, okay, the play doesn't work, right? Or it's a bad screen, but the defender goes under. 
mm-hmm. on it under screen when you ha- you don't have the read you do what's called a rescreen so he does it here basically what the rescreen does is it allows you you set the screen the defender goes under the big moves down a step and he sets it again which now gives you more time and more space to step into a shot because why would you rescreen here so if this was a if this, so this is say it looks like uh they're two men two men or three men right so guard to guard this is who what position is this guy yeah. He's the big, right? So you have what we call the shit bagger. You got the shit bagger on the island. Well, if this is a guard and you come off the ball screen, okay, maybe you go dribble handoff here because you want to pull up a different guy because it's not an advantageous mismatch and you still have lots of time on the clock. Make sense? Yeah. But because you have the target and you only need one domino to fall, now you have the target in the ball screen, rescreen automatically. Bang. What do we get? I mean, he should have probably shot it. He should have shot the first yeah. one. But – because there's time on the clock, not a terrible read. I mean, this guy gets a duck in, right? And he's buried pretty deep. If there was like three on the clock, you're shooting that for sure. So, so far, this is where as a point guard too, like you got to understand, okay, could he have shot both of those shots? Yes. But what do you need your other guys to do for you over the course of the game? Get involved. Play hard. You need Play them hard. to set screens. You need them to run, run the floor. You need them to get to their spots. You need them to give second and third and multiple efforts, right? Which yeah, so you as, as a, a point you, guard, you're thinking about morale a lot during the game. So right now, okay, Calais could have shot the ball twice, but he sees six on the shot clock. If there's three, he's shooting it for sure. Or maybe if it's like the third of the fourth quarter and he's already fed his bigs and now he needs to get a little bit of a different look. Well, now he's pulling it or he's pulling it out, he's playing, right? Yeah. But early in the game, you get your bigs involved. Bang, dump down. Tough pass. But look what happens. Think about what just happened there. Is I know this is a lot of talking, but this is how you break down film. So there's five on the shot clock. The ball just moved. They, they ran two ball screen actions. You got a duck in and you get deep into the clock. What happens? The defense, they make Reach a mistake. Out. They, they mm-hmm. foul. So now think about the morale as a, as a defense. You're like, man, I just played defense for 19 seconds and there's a foul. And now they get the ball out again. Well, now it's early in the game, whatever. It's three minutes into the game. If you do this time after time after time, and do they know, like, did, did Kalaitis know exactly what he was going to do? No, no, he just kept, he kept exploring until there was an option, right? He didn't just shoot the first shot available. He thought, okay, I'm going to get deep into the shot clock, war of attrition, try to wear them down. Something good happens. More often than not, something do- good does happen. As long as bodies are moving, the basketball is moving, or there's pace. If it's just stationary dribbling, right? Or one guy's touching it the whole time and not really moving. No one's cutting. Well, now very rarely are good things going to happen because the defense gets a second to catch their breath, become mentally engaged and they're locked in. Just keep chasing a better look. See the way that uh, Fars is running the floor? Is that great? No. So we talk a lot about your first three steps, right? Bang, ball goes off. This guy's gone. He's the rim runner. What should this guy do and this guy do right here? Go wide. Run and, wide. and fast, right? Because think about this. There's gravity to everything you do. So if he's sprinting, if he is dead sprinting, to the corner like they're supposed to do what does this guy now get to do does he even get to look and clog no chance nope. right but he's building now he would be strong side lead he could potentially be tacking on a downhill against a defender here but they're not even now again because they don't get up the floor and there's they're slow to get up the floor we get a trap in the backcourt which now think about it in terms of the whole possession right Think about what the defense has done here. The offense didn't do what they were supposed to do. They didn't sprint the lane, which is completely controllable, has nothing to do with talent. It's just conditioning and, and will. Yeah. Well, now look at the shot clock. Yeah, done. Like has, Zenit, has Zenit done anything? Nope. And who has the ball? The four man going downhill. <laughs> Good take. Make something out of it, though. He could have done that earlier, though. And I think you could get that. You could get that in a way that tires the defense out more again it's not about the battle it's about the war right so you're trying to yes sure does this play work yes 
if you do the right things consistently and as a point guard, you tell your guys to run to the corners all the time. Now that doesn't mean that you don't hit them. You tell them to run with the intention to the corner and maybe you're looking hit aheads, whatever, but at least what does it do? The deep, what does it do? The defense, it pulls them all the way to the baseline. So over the course of the game, running those extra 15, 20 feet every time. I mean, we went to the track the other day when you did 10, 20 meter sprints with Jim, how tired are you? Just 10. Think mm -hmm. about making the defense do that a hundred times. Shot clock. So now 12, 11 seconds has been eaten, right? Nothing's happened, but at least the ball moves. So what did they do there? They switched the ball screen. What the? Don't swear in case we use this clip. Okay. Think about dribble penetration here. So where are we supposed to be right now? Baseline drive. What is this guy doing right now? So what should he do? He should, he should lift. Nope. He's already no. in his spot. He's baseline drive, baseline drift. Mm -hmm. So this guy's hugging, right? Yeah. So he's already done his job. He shouldn't move. He's shot hunting right now and he's screwing up spacing. This big is diving. He's supposed to. This guy's in the right spot. Who's not in the right spot? Kalathis. Where is he supposed to be? 45. 45. Look at this. If Kalathis is at the 45, who's wide open? Kalathis. Wide open, right? We work on that every single day, right? Yeah. So what happens? Simple. No play. This is not a play. The play broke down. This is motion concepts. Yeah. Because the play breaks down. Now, nothing really has happened that's that threatening. There was a paint touch, but people weren't in the right spots. Yeah. How many people have touched the ball in this possession? Two. Two. Has there been any body contact, really? No. Is this wearing people down? No. That's terrible, yeah. terrible basketball. So think right now, what is the defense feeling? They got a break. Like, <laughs> no, they're feeling like we just stepped on their neck. That's yeah. worth more than a stop, right? If the ball moves, everyone touches the ball. There's cutters, there's pace, there's body contact. People are getting hit on screens, and it's like a paint touch open shot. Even if that ball doesn't go in, even if it doesn't go in the rim, what is the defense thinking? Oh, man, we dodged a bullet right there. And because yeah. someone got beat, a rotation was late, what happens? People start pointing fingers, right? Yeah. And you break down, you get in their mental. But because the offense didn't do what they were supposed to do, they didn't do, they didn't, weren't willing to do the extra little bit of effort to get organized and get in their proper spacing. Now as a defense, you think, now the, it's the opposite. The offense is like, man, what, what is coach? Coach is tripping, where are we running? Guys aren't doing, or they're not where they're supposed to be. This guy comes off, two guys have touched the ball, no ball movement. He shoots a shitty shot. We're out. That's deflating. That's worth more. You see what I mean? You start to like yeah. chip away at the psychology of their team and you try to make them implode. You're basically beating them before the battle even happens. It's all about involvement. You think five on five and you got to think of the mental makeup of where these guys are at. So think about spacing right now. Look at these guys running. Look at their first three steps. Pangos They're is out, right? So Pangos does a great job here. He does what's called a high early outlet. This is what we want as a point guard. Bang, ball goes up. Kevin Pangos is sprinting the lane. Perfect. Perfect. You want to catch the ball as much as you can in this zone above the hash marks. So now, like, we're downhill attacking. Now, if this guy was actually, like, if they were running, well, Kevin Pangos took the ball on the sideline, so he's not going to fill. He should probably fill the backside, and we'll overload. But look at the way the bigs are running. There's no rim runner. There's no quick ball screen. Think of this in terms of like, I'm always going to talk about body shots with you and war of attrition over the course of the game. If you come down, so in 19 seconds, yes, Pangos pushed the pace. No one's in their spots though. So we don't get an initial attack. And you got to think of the offense in terms of like periods of eight seconds. The first eight seconds is typically broken into, okay, four seconds, balls off the glass or ball goes in, bang. We're looking hit aheads. We're looking drag screens. We're trying to get early action right? To get something quick in transition or hit that. Yeah. Sorry. First four seconds is usually hit aheads or like straight line attacks, drive and pitch. Someone's sprinting the lane, looking to shoot. Well, yeah. the next four seconds, three to four seconds, that's where we look for drag screen opportunities in the middle of the floor that are high, but the wings are spaced. Now the point guard comes off with pace. What does that do to the defense? They had to fan out because they were chasing in transition. 
Now the point guard comes off a high early drag screen in the middle of the floor here, and he's going downhill. He is either going to get drop off or the defense has to help strong side kick that pass that we work on every single day. Right. Yeah. Even say it doesn't work. Okay. Now what? Now you pull it out. Now we get to our spots. Now we execute our offense for the eight to 10 seconds in the middle. Typically you'll yeah. run your stuff and the ball is moving. Bodies are moving. Defense is going from close out, deny, to help. They have to navigate screens. You hope that somewhere in there, the system will create an opportunity for you to score, right? Yeah. But you have to be organized and you have to get guys to get to their spots early so you can play like this. Now, okay, play breaks down. Now you would look to exploit a mismatch. Now you call up high middle ball screen with the person that you want. And now as the point guard, you are dictating, right? To try to get something late. And again, even if it's six seconds, six seconds is a whole hell of a lot of time. You don't really got to shoot the ball. You don't got to shoot the ball until one second on the clock, mm. right? So you can wear it down all the way. But they missed an opportunity. So that's one of three that they've missed on the possession. Look at the pace. Is this good pace? No. Look it's at the way that they're rolling. The amount of time they got. But look what happened. They got the mismatch. So, Pam, remember the first play that they ran? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> like the Pam? double screen. They didn't double screen this time. No, no, they are. It's right here. They're double screening. But they got the right switch, so they didn't do it. So Kevin Pangos on the first one, this is where as a point guard, like you're constantly thinking. So Kevin yeah. Pangos comes off. On the first play, it was literally the exact same people guarding. So they had clearly, Barca had scouted this play, and they decided that before the play even started that they were going to pre-switch it so that when they came off the final ball screen, it was still guard to guard. See how this is a guard guarding a big, and now this yeah. is a big guarding a guard. So they were trying to get tricky with it. Well, then Zenit and Kevin Pango is a very smart point guard. He recognized this and he sees, okay, I'm not going to let you pre-switch it. I got the switch. That's the whole point of the play. Either you get a two-on-one, a three-on-two, an angle or a switch, right? That's the whole point of the play. Well, he gets it. Look what he's doing now. What is he doing? Do you see that hand motion? Yeah, it's some goalie. That's a tough, tough shot. So typically what I like to do or tell my point guards to do is you don't want this guy to be able to sit in the gap. See how he's approaching. And this is even a tough shot. Yeah. You want to have some sort of action here, what we call misdirection or weak side action, where you could have like, we call it gunner pin downs. You could have a flare screen. You could have an interchange. What does that do? Even if they still switch it because it's guard to guard, at least it makes people honor the action because if they don't honor the action, the exchange, if these two right now came together, and this guy was a little bit lower. Well, this guy would probably go dunker to dunker. See, the floor is overloaded right now, mm -hmm. right? Like I would probably send this guy here. But you send him down. Now, if they don't honor that exchange and this guy's actually in the deep corner, do you see why I'm always telling you guys like the difference between here to here? See what it does in terms of spacing? What is Pango seeing right now? He sees body, 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 right? He sees five people that are like compact. But if that guy's actually in the corner, well, that lowers this man here or at least here. Now on that exchange, any sort of action, there's more ground to cover, more opportunity for slips, people get pulled, you have more driving angles behind and all that it comes down to as a point guard is recognizing spacing, organizing the floor, then looking to attack your mismatch with space. But right now there was poor spacing, defense did a great job, tough shot. So, okay, they hit it. Does the defense feel deflated right now? No. The tough shot, right? Whatever. No. Versus if, if that was a wide pin down or an exchange, right? And now he punches the paint and the defense goes from out. They have to collapse on penetration to back out. And even if he misses it, that doesn't feel good as a team, right? You know that like you're dodging bullets. Yeah, yeah. I got you. How many dribbles did he take off the ball screen? One, two, One, two three. three. See how deep he gets in the paint, though? You see on that, well, I talk to you guys a lot about penetrating to pass. Now, on the penetration to pass, you still need to be a threat. Do you see what this man is doing here in terms of spacing? Yeah. What's he doing? He's too high. He's too high, right? So now it's drop coverage. 
he comes off with pace against who? A big. But because this man is here, he's not in the corner. Now he has no option yeah. but to throw the throwback. But Nick does a good job here. What is this cut called? Think about when we go roller and we always do side three-man action, right? Mm -hmm. So wherever there's a roller, there's always a fill. It's either yeah. up or behind. What do we call that cut if we go baseline penetration? The crack back. Crack back, right? So initially, okay. And again, it's important that you know, like there always is a solve. Everyone can do their job a little bit better, but as long as you work the ball and you attack and you punch the paint, oftentimes you're going to be able to have an option. That's a good option. So we talk about penetrating the pass right now. Does it look, does this guy think that he's going to be able to score? Yeah, kind of. You think? Think about this. If you come off right now, 12 seconds on the shot clock. So again, what is drop coverage? Giving up. Give up the, 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 the mid-range shot. So if he comes off and he hits that over yeah. the course of the game, this is why the NBA has gone to, I mean, analytics have become a massive part of the game. They say long twos won't beat you, right? Mm -hmm. So if he shoots that ball and he goes in, well, there's 11 seconds on the shot clock. The ball's only moved twice. Okay. Are you going to hit enough long twos to beat me? No. No, you're not. But because he punches the paint and the roller dives hard and gets contact opposite sides. Think if this man now was here, what could this man now do? If he was here, he didn't get proper spacing. Now this man <sighs> could make a play on the ball, right? Mm -hmm. He could get a second effort, but because his spacing is good now, easy jumper, paint touch three, beautiful basketball. That is worth more than three points because that yeah. infuriates the defense. See this pressure? This is good. What is this doing? Shot clock's going. Shot clock's yeah. going. Shot clock's going. Shot clock's going. But he can't really think here because he has to deal with this. I mean, he still can think, but it's not as easy. He's not able to just organize the floor. He has to deal with that, and it's just wearing him down a little bit. Now, it doesn't seem like a lot in one possession, but over the course of the game, it matters. What kind of coverage is that? Side ball screen. We are, do you see here on the back side too? So typically, like in regular, you know, when you don't have advanced scouting, if this ball is here and, and Nick is guarding Kevin, well, where should Nick theoretically be? The paint. On the split line, right? But they say, okay, they know that their, their backside is going to be inverted because there's a non-shooter here. So the non-shooter is in the side pick and roll, right? And what is this coverage called? Downing or... Icing a ball screen, icing a ball screen. So because they know that he can pull more towards the shooter because they don't want him to get the ball. They think they'll probably, it looks like there might be a double pin down here or something, or some sort of a stagger, but this man cannot shoot the ball. What could this guy do now? Potentially see how he's pointing to go back and get the ball. See how uh, Barca was able to do exactly what they wanted there. So think about threats. He comes off, they down it. There's good pressure. This guy can't shoot, right? And now there's no quick action here. As long as there is a, if this was a double pin down, mm -hmm. what would Pangos be walking down into? Because this guy can't shoot it. And they, there's always a way to solve every equation is what I'm trying to tell you here. So if this guy went to go set a pin down, what is this guy thinking? He's either thinking dribble handoff or there's no help here, right? Because gap, gap, all you got to get is a pin down for a shooter with body contact, bang, he's smacking it. Say that this guy was a non-shooter and you wanted this guy to get the ball back. Well, if you go sell opposite on ice and there's good spacing on the backside, if you can get over top of the ice, throw and then sell opposite and come back to the ball, what is there not on the other side of the dribble handoff? There's no hedge. There's hedge. nobody there. So you could literally walk into a three. You see how there's multiple situations that you could solve it, but it'd always be based on who is in what spot. What is the best look for our team? So this is kind of a broken play. So right now, Barca did exactly what they want. That's smart by the big. So side ball screen, you have a different, you have two solutions typically, right? If you want to play it so, or with an ice or a downing type situation, you can either play side ball screen, drag it away from the side ball screen, throw back, sell opposite and come off the dribble handoff like I just talked about. Yeah. Or you can flip the ball screen. Now, the thing that I would say about this flip is this is very hard. We talk about creating a long run on a ball screen, right? Remember I talk about that often with you guys? Yeah. 
because it gives you more space to be able to snake and to make reads. Well, Pangos right now, he could have made this easier for himself by just dragging the ball back. He already knows the biggest flipping. So he goes, okay, right now there's body contact as a defender. You see how he's trying to blow this screen up? Yeah. Well, now, even if Pangos comes off, look at the spacing. Look what he's dribbling into. Nothing. Yeah. So what could he have done? There's still five. I mean, it's tight because they're five on the clock. But he could have dragged it and then attack with a head of steam to be able to get in the paint. But just taking yeah. one or two dribbles back and then going, now you're attacking with a head of steam and you give the defense a split second, sorry, the, your teammates a split second to reorganize the floor where you could have gotten proper spacing. Very tough shot, right? Yeah. Defense did a good job. Do you see, though, how in that possession, spacing could have solved things? Yeah, the smallest things could have made the biggest difference. The play would have been completely different. But here's the crazy thing. The deeper that you get into the shot clock, right, people are more inclined to make what? Mistakes. So even though the offense hasn't been great, there's still been mistakes. There hasn't been any real, like, point of action strike that's been real intense. But because they've been on defense now, and they've had to move. And as an offensive player, like it's not as hard to move offensively as it is to slide, right? It's more mm -hmm. taxing. So because the ball gets deep into the shot clock, and even though it's a bad possession, look what happens. Offense oh, board. Wear him down. Now what? You're going to play defense for 40 seconds? <laughs> yeah. This is the worst. When I see this as a coach, I lose my mind. So you just get an offense rebound. You got him on the ropes, the absolute ropes. It's not a rite of passage to come off of a ball screen and be like, oh, it's a free possession. No, no, no. That's not what killers do. Killers attack and they attack. They, they milk it again. They literally bleed yeah. them dry. So now he comes off. What should he do? He should probe. There's eight seconds on the shot clock and he's shooting he a, runner in, a runner in the paint. Now as a defense, think about, we always want to talk about the psychology of the team with you. So you come off that offensive rebound, right? Defense is often they're thinking, oh man, they're getting pissed. Give up an offensive rebound. Man, I don't want to play defense again. Okay. Now you give, now the guy gets in the paint and he shoots a bad shot. He lets you off the hook and they beat your shit. Now what? What are you thinking as a defense? Let's go. We're back. We're out. Yeah. We survived. See how Kevin Pangos always goes high early outlet? He gets the yeah. spot. See how he's getting up the floor? Bang. Look where he's catching. He you doesn't catch. wait. He doesn't wait around. You catch here. And if you're paying attention to what he's doing. So, yes, he is on this side of the floor. But what is he thinking right now? He all as a point guard. You know where the bodies are on the floor. And you have a general sense all the time of where there's more congestion, where there's less congestion. So you yeah. always want to go to the point of less congestion for the outlet if you can, because what is that going to create on the initial attack? Space. More space. More space, more space right? Higher the outlet. Now, how many people are on this side of the floor? Three. There's one right now. The big looked like he oh. rim ran. I, I didn't see, or he's back here. But there's one, two, three. I didn't see where the other guy was. Let's see. So he's already gone deep corner. Oh, you're talking about the other team. Yeah, there was one guy. See how that one's better? See the high, the flip ball screen is yeah. high. You can already see like the possession's probably going to be advantageous. What did they do here? So when you snake a high ball screen, it's very hard for the defense to stay because if he goes under this, he goes under, Clay, this goes under, and he's yeah. dropped coverage. What does this guy do? He just pops. He's either got a shot or a dribble handoff with no defense. So he has to fight over, right? Because Pangos can shoot the ball. Pango snakes it. The snake causes a breakdown. Yeah, he stayed. The big man stayed. He didn't come back up. So he snakes. What do they just do? What do these defenders do? Switch. And they switch back. Smart. Yeah. Offense has flowed a little bit, right? Look at the shot clock. Eight seconds. Think how the action, right? Like this is hard. So they chased them. 
high ball screen, good tempo. There was good pace initially, pretty good. It could have been better, but it's pretty good. Getting into the shot clock. Now, Pangos is still exploring, exploring, exploring. Ball moves, more people touch. Bodies are moving. We're in proper spacing. Breakdown, put the man on the island. Straight line drive, foul. Four seconds on the shot clock. 20 seconds into the shot clock, the ball moved. Good things happen. And what kind of penetration is that? Cardinal sin, right? Yeah. Middle penetration. So what should this guy, so right now, think is the defense. Okay. Pitch. Right now, Kevin Pangos is a shooter. This guy is a shooter too, but he's high. What should this man be telling this man? I got your hope because he's high. He has room. He doesn't have There's, that. He doesn't have so space like that. In, term, in terms of spacing. So you, you got to divide the floor into sets of three, right? So if the ball is on the sideline, you keep the ball on the sideline because now help is automatically built in. Once the ball gets middle, where does help come from? Well, help ain't coming from here. This is one pass away tonight. Help has to come from here and here. It's like a rush. So you're out to in. Now he's either getting straight line drive or he's going to get paint touch three. kick. Good yeah. shot, right? So this man could have avoided that simply by talking and adjusting his positioning. Number 22. Right now, does this man look like he can defend this guy? Nope. This guy looks like Vladdy Divox. <laughs> so look at his positioning. It's poor, right? He's forcing to the middle of the floor, shading yeah. to the middle of the floor. And what's this defender thinking? Exactly what he does. All I got to do is shift his body weight. See how he shifts the body weight. Yeah. Gets him back, and he knows there's a gap there, so it's cat and mouse. He's like, okay, I know I'm not going to go that way. I just need you to think I'm going that way, and then the gap arises. Now, straight line drive, collapse. This man could have avoided all of this by simply just saying, hey, 21, whatever your name is. I'm, I'm sitting in the gap, and he's stunting high and then forcing a kickout or shooting the gap there on that penetration. But he doesn't do that. He's hugging and essentially doing nothing. Yeah, no communication. Bang. And this is what this is always what starts happening. Look, the deeper this is it right here. This is where it starts. The deeper you get into the shot clock, middle penetration. What is he this guy thinking right now? He's what? He just got beat off the dribble. He got beat middle. He got crossed over and he fouled the guy. Even if he blocked it, but what is he thinking? How does he feel right now? Bad. He feels embarrassed, right? Yeah. What does he start talking to? If you're winning, if you're up 20, do you ever talk to the referees? Ever? Nope. Never. What is he doing? So what is this right now? Yeah. This is what? This is mentally weak. You don't talk yeah. to the refs. You huddle, you get on to the next play. Mm -hmm. But this is where it starts. So yeah. now you're showing a point of weakness. You went, you're talking to the referee. You're worried. You're, where is your focus level? Are you focused oh, on what you're supposed to be focused on? You're focused oh. on the referees. Yeah. You can never focus on the referees. They're going to do what they're going to do. You can't control that. But yeah. if the guy did what he was supposed to do and he kept the guy on the sideline and forced along too, you ain't, there's nothing that's going to happen. Either the yeah. guy hits it or he gets a rebound and we go, right? Yeah, simply by just forcing him baseline, that could have been like a whole lot different. See the pace that he goes to set the screen with? This is Nikola Mirotic. He played for the Chicago Bulls. Yeah, yeah. What happened on the play? What do we call this action? When there's three people on the sideline, you call it pistol action. A pistol action. So he, what do we get right here? What kind of, what coverage? A switch. Switch. Let's see what he does. So you get the switch. Where's the advantage? What does Miritich do? If Miritich stays out here, is that much of an advantage? No. He's no. Bringing him, he he's dives. Bringing him to, yeah. So because he dives, he flashes. Now, this man, if this guy goes, right, he flashes high post, where should this man go? 45. Opposite. Phil, yeah. If he went opposite, if he flashed and he went opposite, who would be open if this man was actually where he was supposed to be, in the corner? See how spacing matters so much. It would be what? It would be a shot. Yeah. Right? Yeah. yeah. Well, you... 
sec. Flash, skip. If this man was cornered, he would have shot or straight line drive. And then this man would either have to stay hugging or he would have a layup at the rim or a drop off. But it'd be another penetration. Yeah. It'd be hard to deal with. You see, even, even though he gets there, even though the ball is technically in the paint, right? But there's a contested wall up. Are they trying to do anything groundbreaking right now? No. Contested wall up at the rim. This is one of the, this is the best player in Europe. Look what happens. Contested wall up with a six one guard and a big that's ain't even moving. Now he's strong, but do you see the difference? How I always talk about the little details of penetration angles and where the ball gets to. Now this is a little bit different because it's not a penetration, but think look at where he's catching the ball on a wall up as a defender. So right now, is he right at the sweet spot? Is he right under the rim? No. No, he's a little bit off, right? And there's yeah. a contested wall up. Even that that little difference right there, that like 18 inches to potentially two feet, what is he now having to use to finish? Touch. Yeah. He has to use touch, right? Touch is hard enough when there's no defender. Touch is very hard when now you have to worry about getting your shot blocked too. And you can't even think about the release until it's released. See, what? remember we work on this all the time. So Pangos, he leaks up the floor. He leaks. Remember we work on this? He goes to yeah. go, his yeah, initial yeah, action. Yeah. And then what is the cut? What do we call that cut? The, I forget. C cut. The C Comes cut. Comes back yeah. to the ball. Now, what can we get right now? See, like EuroLeague is much more disciplined. So they ha they, they're they running things every single time. I mean, this is probably the best intellectual basketball in the world. Um so that's why they're not going like high early drags and every coach has their own philosophy, right? But they get into their stuff fast. They're not getting their high early drags. Guard to guard screen, what do they get? They got. Guard to guard, so what do we call this? A flare screen, right? Something like that. Fire, something, something about fire, something like that. He's called this a ram screen. So ram. If a, it's called a ram screen. Ram so screen. you get a pin down, or sorry, you it's either a pin down or you're going to get some sort of a ball screen into another ball screen so that you can get the switch. If you ran it as a pin down, well, now you're trying to get the guards to switch. You already know that they're going to switch because it's guard to guard, whether you had the ball up top and you went pin down and then you lifted the big or you go guard to guard and you get the initial switch in space. See, the timing matters because he is a much worse defender. Do you remember the guy that got attacked off the dribble? The last possession? Who was it? Yeah, it was this man. So they're yeah. trying to put him in the action, right? Because they pick the weakest link and they go at you relentlessly. So they try to get switch because they know if they put Kalathis and this big in the ball screen, well, he's a good defender. He's a very good defender. So now they go, okay, they know that the rules typically of off or defenses are that guard to guard is going to switch, right? So they get the man they want. And now they put the worst defender in the ball screen yeah. with their best ball handler. Foul. You foul, you blocked him. What could Pangos have done right here? Pass it a big or pull up if he keeps going down. Wait, you wait in the pocket. So right now you always need to wait until the big rolls, unless you turn the corner. The exception to the rule is right here. If this man jumps out at you, now you're turning the corner hard. But until yeah. right now, what he now is dictating the play. He has a gap, right? His power, this yeah. This man is trying to recover either here or here. If he recovers here and they pull in, he might have skip, he might have flare, or what does that do? So this guard goes over top and he switches on the roller. Hmm. What does Pangos now have? You can put him in jail and give space. He has a switch there potentially. Yeah. But if the guard comes over top and he stays, Pangos should stop, take his high leg, stop right here. Get this yeah. guy on his back, let the big roll. And now look to attack again. But because he doesn't play with pace and he goes super fast. This is what Westbrook, when people talk about what Russell Westbrook not playing with pace, or he used to play, he's better, much better now. This is it. 12 seconds running downhill, fast finish, not very good, right? Yeah. Could have killed it by simply putting the defender in jail.